and loved by you, you won't let go. No matter what I do, no, it's not one or the other. Tar truth and ridiculous grace to be known, fully known, and loved by you, I'm fully known. And loved by you It's so unusual It's frightening I'm fully known And loved by you It's so unusual, it's frightening You see right through the mess inside me And you call me out to pull me in Tell me I can start again And I don't need to keep on hiding I'm fully known And loved by you you won't let go, no matter what I do. And it's not one or the other. It's hard truth and ridiculous grace to be known, fully known, and loved by you. I'm fully known, and loved by you. It's so like you to keep pursuing. So like me to go straight Whoa, whoa, whoa But you got my heart With your truth The kind of love that's bulletproof And I surrender to your kindness Cause I'm fully known And loved by you You won't let go No matter what I do and it's not one or the other It's hard truth and ridiculous grace to be known Fully known And loved by you I'm fully known And loved by you How real, how wide, how rich, how high is your heart I cannot find the reasons why you give me so much how real, how wide, how rich, how high is your heart? I cannot find the reasons why you give me so much. It's great to see each and every one of you here uh, today as we're here to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I want to remind you that those of you that see these uh, around people's necks, these are the people that might be able to answer a question for you. Uh, if you have any questions or any help or need any help during the service or after the service, uh, these are folks that might have you the answer or be able to steer you in the way of an answer. How about that? Um, also, just kind of let you know that um, we do have a connection card. Our connection card is on your phone. You take your phone out, uh, you text to the number 474747, and you type in Hello Core, Hello Core all one word. Um, so you do that, you'll get a form, you can fill that out, and uh, even the folks that are at home, you can do that as well. Um, we'd really like to hear from you uh, at, during this time and want you to fill that out as well. Also letting you know, tonight at 5 o'clock, we'll be having Family Fun Night, and that's an opportunity for uh, families to come together. Uh, they're going to do some crafts, uh, do some games and things like that, all in a socially distanced way uh, so that people can gather together, have some fun, uh, and enjoy fellowship and learn a little bit about how we can give thanks to God 
uh, during this season. Also, then you know that between the two services, we do have um, a time of discipleship for families and children uh, and grandparents uh, to learn how you can faith your children, uh, and we will also give them some tools uh, during that time uh, so that they may continue to grow in their faith. Uh, We're all about trying to help you raise your children up in a way that they shall go, that when they are old, they will not depart from it. Um, So, also letting you know that we have vestry nominations. If you know someone that you'd like to put forward to be a leader in this congregation, you can do that on your connection card. Um, So, those are all the announcements I have today except this one. We are going to be recognizing um, our veterans and families who have served. We're doing it differently than we have in the past. Normally, in the past, we've had all of those folks come forward, but that would not be socially distanced. So what we're going to do is have you um, in, your, in your pew, you can stand or sit or kneel. We're going to do a series of prayers uh, during that, but we want to make sure that we honor you today. We also would normally bring the flag out um, over you all. We're not going to do that today. We're going to keep it in a very prominent place also with uh, beautiful red, white, and blue flowers that we have on the altar today. Would you please stand? Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as we worship you, the King of kings, the unchangeable power of the universe, that all things are made through you and you are in all things. And you're working out your purpose. May we worship you this day and glorify your name. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Please pray with me. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open and all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that He might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as He is pure, that when He comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like Him, His eternal and glorious kingdom, where He lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Oh, 
middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive I raise a hallelujah I raise a The first reading today is taken from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, beginning at the, first, at the 15th verse. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Would you please stand for the reading of the gospel? The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all came, became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trummed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came along also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. So today, I would like to introduce you to my imaginary friend. So I bet you can guess what my imaginary friend looks like, right? No, you probably can't. Okay, let me give you some hints. Um, oh, my imaginary friend looked a lot like my mom. Did that help? Wait a minute, you've never met my mom before, right? Okay, let me try this again. So my imaginary friend um, looked like my mom. Okay, well, I look a lot like my mom, except my mom had dark black hair and green eyes. So did that help? 
Now, based on knowing what I look like, you can get some sort of idea of what my imaginary friend looks like, right? That's a better, clear picture, isn't it? Saying that she looked a lot like my mom, dark black hair and green eyes, right? Well, you know, in the Bible verse today, in Colossians, Paul, in the Bible, had a hard time trying to tell the people about God. You see, the Colossians were Greek Christians, and although they heard a lot about Jesus, they didn't know who the God of Israel was and who God of Israel looked like. So he was trying to point them in the right direction, just like it says in Colossians right here in the beginning. It's sad, but he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. So Paul was trying to point and say, to know God, you can know who Jesus is. When you know who Jesus is, you know who God is. Jesus is the son of God. So if I were to pretend like I am Jesus, I would say, to know my father, I look a lot like him. And to know who I am, just read the Bible. Discover who I am. I am pointing the way of the invisible God. And so I just want to give you a quick hint. Who is God? Looking in the Bible, reading the stories about Jesus? God is love. Heather, thank you so much for that. That was awesome. I never know what she's going to do. But it works. Every time. Today, we're going to be taking a look in our uh, sermon series as we launch deeper and deeper into the promises of God. And today, we'll be looking at the promise of God that says, God will sustain you. God will sustain you. I'm going to say it again. God will sustain you. I say that because quite literally, we understand that there is a bit of anxiety in our world today with elections, pandemics, all those different things that are going on, and we need to hear more than ever that God will sustain you. It's a promise. They have uh, the eve of Veterans Day as we're going to be celebrating uh, those veterans who have served uh, the deep divide uh, in our country at an election that is just a little over 50% to 49-ish point something millionth, tenth percent out there. You've watched the news. You've seen it. It is incredible what's going on today. So I'm going to turn to Jim Collins, who wrote a book called Good to Great, uh, and he interviewed Admiral Jim Stockdale, the highest ranking officer of the Hanoi Hilton, which was a prisoner of war camp uh, in the Vietnam War. Collins asked Rear Admiral, or Admiral Stockdale, who didn't make it out? Who didn't make it out of the Hanoi Hilton? And he said, oh, that's an easy answer. And he says, the optimists. The optimists, oh, they were the ones that said we were going to be out by Christmas, and then Christmas had come and gone, and they were not released from captivity. They said, oh, we'll be out by Easter, and then Easter would come and go, and then Christmas, and then Easter and many of them died from a broken heart. Optimism, my dear friends in Christ, will not get you through crisis. But a God who comes into the world in the name of Jesus and stands next to you will guard you and guide you and lead you through troubled waters. That is who we worship today. Admiral Stockdale said this, it is a very important lesson that you never confuse faith 
that will prevail in the end with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. So will we look to our faith in Jesus to lead us through difficult times when we need to be sustained? In the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 20, are going to give us some hints on who this Jesus is. Paul continues to clarify that Jesus is the supreme being over every ruler and power and fear and concern that you and I could ever have. He is the only one that can bring true peace, that can bring true forgiveness. Jesus Paul declares, is the triumphant Redeemer. Now those of you that have been to church and are in church, or those of you that are here and wondering what this faith is all about, or those of you that are out there watching uh, from the comfort of your own couch, you may be wondering who this Jesus is and what actually he can do for you in the middle of a turbulent time. Well, Paul is going to go on just like Heather elaborated a minute ago. And he is going to say that he is, Jesus is, the image of God. He is the creator of the universe. So it's one thing for many of you all to go, yes, Jesus is redeemer, but to point to him as creator as God says, let there be light, Jesus is saying, let there be light. As the Holy Spirit is hovering over creation, Jesus is with the Spirit, hovering over creation, bringing everything into being. Wow. So if Jesus can create he can probably also deal with chaos that you and I are going through each and every day. He is the creator, the image of God, and thank you so much for that illusion of my very best friend, to be honest with you, who is Jesus. And when I look at Jesus, I see God the Father. And when I look at Jesus, I see God the Son. And when I look at Jesus, I see God the Holy Spirit all wrapped up. In one. In him, Paul elaborates a little further, is the fullness of God which was pleased to dwell. All of God, every aspect of God is in the Son. The DNA of the Father, if you will, is transferred into the Son. He is all God, one and all present and powerful. In him, all the fullness of God was pleased. Can't you hear the words of Paul? Pleased to dwell. That's love. God the Father dwelling in love and compassion being poured out to all humanity in Christ Jesus. There's no competing power. There's no intermediary spirits. I have friends that are big angelologists. They dig angels and they say angels are with them all the time. I don't need an angel. I need Jesus with me at all times. I need the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So for some of you that like to go to Walmart where you think you can get everything, let me tell you, if you want peace and you want power and you want the creator of the universe, Jesus is the one-stop shop. You get it all in Christ Jesus. Through him, he reconciled everything. 
And his power is deployed in the purpose of reconciliation with the creation and with the creator. And if you have not figured it out today, there is a deep divide in our country and in the world. And no one is going to fix it except Jesus Christ. And those of us that come under his power and reflect that love and compassion with each other is going to take you and me living Jesus in our lives so that we can be reconciled with him and be made one. To reconcile means to change from enmity, things are to part, to friendship. And fourth thing he's going to say in this passage that I want to go into today is this. You receive peace by the blood of the cross. This is the great exchange, dear friends in Christ. For those of you and myself who are alien from God because of our own corruption, the own way we live our lives, when we place that corruption, that sin, that disdain upon Jesus who goes to the cross, he reconciles it. And he takes that and he exchanges it with love and compassion and forgiveness for you. How many of you and I need that great exchange right this moment? talking about the cross. I'm going to bring up a movie for you. And the movie is called Saving Private Ryan. The movie begins as the rangers storm Omaha Beach. And as they storm Omaha Beach, if they make it out of Omaha Beach, it's a miracle, number one. And next they go out to save Private Ryan. And as they go into skirmish after skirmish where Private Ryan is, they say once they find him, come with us and we will save you. Private Ryan says this, I am not going. I have to stay here because if I leave, my men are going to die. And after a brutal battle, Tom Hanks leans over to Private Ryan and whispers, Earn this. Friends in Christ, no ranger would ever say, earn this. For the past 200 years, their slogan, motto is summa sponte. And that means of their own accord, or I choose this. Because a ranger chooses three times how they will serve. Once, when they join the army. Second, when they go to airborne school. And third, when they're in the ranger regiment. A ranger says this, I choose this. I volunteer for this. Jesus said, I choose this. I volunteered for this. I was in the beginning of creation and I came into the world and I choose this. I choose to go to the cross because I know that you are alienated from God and I want to bring you to one. I know that you need reconciliation with those that you're struggling to love right now. And I choose this to reconcile that. I choose to take the great, great exchange upon myself. So dear friends in Christ, this is the purpose of Jesus. He says, I will sustain you when there is no hope. And it says in Colossians, he reconciled himself 
to all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace by the blood of his cross. He will offer you, and I hope, between you and anything else that is causing divide, between you and yourself that is causing your own divide, between you and your family where you're frustrated, where anything comes in the way, Jesus makes a way. Where there was not hope, there is hope, and his name is Jesus. And as I wrap this up, I give you one of my verses that I love so dearly. And it's from Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39, and it says this. You might want to write it down when you're struggling. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any power, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Will God sustain you? He has since the foundation of of the world. Whatever you're going through, God will sustain you because that's what God does. Amen. Amen. For the beginning of time With no point of reverence You spoke to the dark Fleshed out the wonder of life And as you speak Hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath, planets form. It's to worship so alive. I can see your heart in everything you've made. Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings, you praise the soul alive. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. Once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath. If it all See your heart in everything you say. Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you, so will I. If the 
stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you I, so will I. If the mountains go where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praises still fall shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. God of your promise, you chased down my heart through all of my failures and pride. On a hill you created, the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, hundred billion failures disappear Well, you lost your life so I could find it here If you left the grave and so alive I can see your heart in everything you've done Every part designed in a work of art called love If you gladly chose surrender, so will I I can see your heart a billion different ways Every precious one, a child you die to save if you gave your life to love them, so will I Like you would again a hundred billion times But when measure could amount to your desire You're the one who never leaves the one behind Together, let us proclaim what we believe about this God of creation who was before all time, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Join me in the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may stand or sit or kneel according to your own custom. Honoring our veterans with the Veterans Day Litany. Today we remember all those who have served in our country's armed forces to preserve the freedoms you have granted us to make it impossible for those who would strive to take away our freedoms. For the men and women who serve in the Air Force, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard, together, Lord Jesus, we ask your blessings. 
for the family members who have made great sacrifices in order to make it possible for their service members to be on watch at home or around the world or to go into harm's way together. Lord Jesus, we ask your blessing. For the families who grieve the death of their loved ones that went into harm's way never to return, together, Lord Jesus, we ask your blessing. Jesus tells us that no one is greater, has greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. For all those veterans who have been willing to lay down their lives for us, together, Lord Jesus, we ask your blessing. For the veterans of past wars who bear scars in their bodies and spirits, together, Lord Jesus, we ask your blessing. For veterans who came home but couldn't fit in with their families or communities anymore, Lord Jesus, we ask your blessing. Keep all our veterans in your care today. Grant them the peace they sought to preserve for others. As we honor our veterans, we also pray for peace. Teach all your people the ways of peace that those who have sacrificed so much for peace and freedom will not have done so in vain. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Take a few moments to confess any areas where you need to deny yourself and follow Jesus, any area where you're grasping to save your life rather than lose it, or anything else you need to confess. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Together, almighty God, creator of all, you marvelously made us in your image, but we have corrupted ourselves and damaged your likeness by rejecting your love and hurting our neighbors. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. We are sincerely sorry and heartily repent of our sins Cleanse us and forgive us by the sacrifice of your Son. Remake us and lead us by your Spirit, the Comforter. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins and true repentance and amendment of life and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to the offering, and then as we come to receiving Jesus, we remember that no man lays down his life for a friend like Jesus does. But in the offering, he asks us to simply do the same. You can do that symbolically through your tithes and pledges, which you can give on the way out or in uh, making your pledge for this coming year or in uh, online form. But remember, that's just a symbol. Money is just a sacrament of what you truly believe in your heart. And so out of that abundance of love for the one who laid down his life for you, that's how you give back to him. Please stand as we continue. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. 
as our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory as yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once upon the cross. Therefore, Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. In anticipation of receiving the communion elements on your way out the door, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, We thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, Be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.